Well, hey there guys, John here. Well, as you can see, I'm just uh, outside today enjoying a little bit of fire time. And figured since we were out here uh, doing the fire thing, might as well talk a little bit about it. Uh, there's a subject I've been wanting to cover for a little while now. Um, you know, for those of us that spend uh, any amount of time in the outdoors, uh, fire's a you know nice part of it. It's a part that enhances our outdoor experience. You know, whether that's cooking up a good meal over a nice uh, bed of coals, a nice hot fire, or uh, you know just hanging out with uh, some friends or family, sitting around the fire, it's part of the experience, at least for me. Fire can also be you know critical in certain circumstances in the outdoors, especially in a survival situation. Um, you know, and there's multiple ways of starting a fire. Uh, lots of videos out there on different methods, you know, whether it's the primitive methods from, you know, bow drill or hand drill or flint and steel, um, you know, friction fires, those types of things to more modern things like matches, um, you know, that, that kind of stuff. So anyway, uh, what I wanted to talk about today was my personal favorite method of fire, and that is the good old Bic lighter. Um, yeah, I've been carrying one of these uh, with me on outdoors since I was a teenager um, and have carried one under, you know, about every scenario, every type of situation in the outdoors, you know, um, all the way up to uh, high elevation, midwinter snow, you know, below zero temperatures and, uh, you know, the good old Bix never failed me. So anyway, I wanted to talk a little bit about that today and cover some of the pros and the cons of using a Bic lighter as your uh, fire source um, as well as look at some of some of the cons you know a lot of people um, don't like uh, the lighters they don't trust them as well because um, you know they say they don't function as well at high elevation um, in the cold or you know when they're wet they could run out of fluid lots of you know um, supposed cons and so what I want to show you today is just ways of overcoming those cons and show you how um, the good old lighter can function under any circumstance, can be a reliable source of, uh, you know, fire. So, well, the first thing that I wanted to say regarding this was this is just my preferred method. Now, of course, there is a lot of other good uh, methods for starting fire, you know, such as, uh, you know, your old standard matches, um, you know, to your uh, strikers, your flint and steel, uh, even to the primitive methods. And so whatever you're most comfortable with, you know, that's, uh, of course, the thing to stick with. Um, but like I said, my, uh, my personal choice is the, uh, good old Bic lighter here. Well, let's cover some of the, uh, supposed weaknesses of these, uh, lighters here. And, uh, let me show you what I know about how to overcome, you know, some of those. Now, one of the first things about these, you know, that people don't like is, uh, cold. When these things get cold, they tend to not function as well. And, uh, really simple here. Uh, how to overcome that? Well, warm them up. Keep them warm, okay? So you don't want to leave your lighter in your pack or, you know, somewhere where it's away from a heat source. Uh, you can keep it in your pocket, um, you know, keep it close to you. If it is cold and you can't get a good flame going on it, uh, go ahead and, you know, put it next to your body. You know, whether that's, uh, you know, tucking your under your armpit or whatever you got to do, you know. Um, if you need fire quick and your lighter's cold, you know, warm it up and it'll function um, perfectly well. So there's that. Uh, one other thing about this is, you know, carrying these lighters, sometimes a fear, or, and actually could be a reality, is that the uh, button here will be depressed uh, without you knowing it. Now, say you do carry this in your pocket to keep it warm, and, you know, this is accidentally depressed, you're going to lose all your fuel, and that's about the last thing you want. So there's a couple methods, you know, for making sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, one is a good old trusty zip tie. Just go ahead and, you know, put that around there. Now, this is going to be a little bit difficult to remove. Um, you know, if you got a knife, no problem. Um, also, you may not want to have to fumble around with trying to remove that. So another great option is uh, just a good old rubber band. You know, go ahead and just uh, put that around a few times. And uh, that's going to keep that from getting depressed. And uh, you're good to go. So there's that. One other uh, bonus about using the rubber band is this is actually really good emergency fire starter. 
This will work even when it's wet. Put it on a nice hot flame and it'll burn for quite a while. Plenty of time to get your fire going. The next thing on these are that when they get wet, you know, the fear is that they won't work. Now, this isn't the same as uh, matches. Now, you know, if your matches get wet, you're pretty much, uh, they're pretty much worthless. You're pretty much in trouble. Um, not so with the lighter. You can actually get one of these going in about, you know, uh, 30 seconds, you can get it dried out. Now, if your lighter does get wet, what you can do to dry it out really quickly to make it usable again is to remove the child safety feature. And you can see this one has it, and on this one it's been removed. Now I'm going to show you really quick just how to remove that. It's really simple. Um, you're going to want to take something and uh, pry off this uh, shield here. Just like so, really easy to remove. And you can see the, uh, the little bar here. Just go ahead and take that and uh, pops right off and you're good to go. So you'll go ahead and put your uh, little shield back on it. And if I can get it on here. Just go ahead and pop that back on and you're just going to want to sit here and roll that you can roll it on your uh, palm roll it on your pant leg whatever it is just uh enough you know uh, you keep rolling it back and forth and the friction that you're going to put on there is going to dry that out to be able to get that spark back and you know of course once you got that um, you got your flame again so that is how to overcome a wet lighter Okay, so we've covered a couple of the, you know, uh, more common problems, you know, lighter gets cold, won't function as well, uh, lighter gets wet, how to dry it back out, uh, just really simple stuff here. Um, another thing that you may have heard about the, using the lighter is at higher elevation. Now, at higher elevations, um, you're not getting as much oxygen to supply to the flame and so you, you will still get a flame it just typically won't be a, a high flame and so you can carry a lighter that has the adjustable um, you know fuel outlet and so you just turn that up and it'll allow you to have a bigger flame another option if you just have a standard lighter like this without the adjustment on it is to warm this up as much as possible so like I said, whether that's, you know, tucking it under your armpit or whatever, close to your body, just get it nice and warm. And it's actually going to, to produce a, you know, a higher flame for you. All right. So the next problem that you may encounter with a lighter is that you may run out of fluid. Now that's typically not going to happen if you're only using this, you know, to light the occasional campfire. Uh, one of these is going to last quite a long time. Um, you know, so if you're just, you know, keeping it in your pack using, you know, whatever, uh, or just carrying it for the survival purposes, a backup, um, you know, this thing, you're not going to have to worry about the, the fluid running out. In the event of, you know, an accidental uh, discharge of the fluid, though, you know, if the, if the button does become depressed somehow and you do lose all of your fluid, um, I'm going to show you a trick to get uh, fire out of this still. You're going to want to first remove this uh, protective cover and now like i said even without any fluid in here you still have the uh, flint that's in there so you're going to want to roll this little roller here and it's going to shave off some of that flint that's on there okay you're going to want to be really careful not to uh, produce a spark what you're doing is building up some little shavings in here now you're going to want a source of tinder you can use, uh, you know, natural tinder, of course. Uh, you know, we got some uh, dried moss, old man's beard, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, some fluff, cattail fluff, whatever it is, you know, whatever tinder source. Uh, for the purposes here, though, I'm just going to use a good old uh, Vaseline soaked uh, cotton ball. So once you get the, uh, you know, flint, you know, maybe 20, 30, 45 seconds, whatever it is, go ahead and um, tap that out onto the cotton ball okay and you can see that black area there that's all that flint that I just put out there hold it really close to the flint um, to the uh, lighter actually and then go ahead and spark it up there you go so we just have fire without any fluid pretty simple not much to it um, like I said uh, if your lighter does become depressed um, all you got to do is utilize that spark that you can still get off of it. So, and that's going to work 
you know, like I said, even if it's wet, out of fluid, anything, you're still going to pr produce fire out of that. Um, on that note, uh, those cotton balls are always good to carry. As you can see that thing's burning away over there in the background. It's actually really wet out today. And so some of, uh, you know, whether it's these dried grasses or the, you know, the uh, old man's beard that I showed you, they're going to be a little bit harder to get going. But uh, typically, you know, you can find some type of uh, uh, tinder to be able to use. So anyway, that is about um, it, I think, on these lighters. Like I said, I just wanted to cover this in a video today. I haven't seen a lot. You know, there's a lot of videos out there, uh, some really, uh, really informative videos on making fire, you know, different fire methods uh, from, from some really skilled people. You know, they've spent a lot of time, you know, working the bow drill, uh, working the hand drill, the friction fires. Um, you know, the flint and steel, those types of things, and those are excellent skills to know. You know, of course, especially in the events that you lose your lighter, you lose your man-made piece of equipment, um, it's always good to have a backup. Um, but for the situations that the majority of us will encounter in, you know, the outdoors or even in a, um, you know, a lost or survival situation, uh, you know, a lighter is pretty much going to cover you. Um, so there that's that like i said i haven't seen too many videos uh covering this there's lots out there on the uh you know the other methods that i mentioned and i just wanted to cover this this has been the method that i've always used um spent a lot of time up in the woods uh, a lot of time you know uh, when i was younger hunting elk hunting really cold temperatures really diverse wet cold snowy high altitude uh circumstances and uh, the lighters never failed me, not once, not one time ever um, have I failed to be able to, uh, you know, produce fire out of a lighter. So it is my go-to fire method. I do like to keep a backup, you know, whether it's a book of matches, um, you know, a striker, something like that. It's always good to have redundancy in um, items like fire where, uh, you know, it's a necessity. And... Um, I didn't want to cover too much of the survival aspect in this video. Um, I wanted to keep it more toward just the general outdoors uh, person. Um, you know, uh, although this is, you know, a perfect survival item right here, and it would be my primary survival um, option for making fire, uh, the good old Bic lighter. So there you have it. That's about all I got for uh, today, guys, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.